Miracle signs and wonders require certain spiritual atmospheres to happen. This is my message now. Most times, believers want to walk in signs and wonders. Believers want to walk in the miraculous. Believers desire to see supernatural results happen in and through their life. Um, but most times, believers do not know that the supernatural, please listen, the supernatural is atmosphere dependent. Say after me, the supernatural is atmosphere dependent. That means the supernatural does not just happen in any atmosphere and with any atmosphere. There is a specific atmosphere that must be created. There is a combination of spiritual components that must coexist to create the atmosphere of the supernatural. But that if and when that atmosphere is created, then nothing restrains the hand of God from reaching his people. Are we together? We learn from biology and we learn from agriculture that a seed does not grow in just any soil and in just any atmosphere. I had the privilege of visiting a professor and visiting his farm not too long ago and I was, I was remarkably amazed as they did a tour for me around that farm, hectares and acres of land, superior technology, brought in Israelis to come and design, you know, the whole farm. And I was taken somewhere where they grow vegetables in 21 days, exactly. 21 days from planting to harvesting. Exact technology. But I found out that the plants, they create a greenhouse system. So there is an atmosphere. They simulate the best atmosphere that can make for that result. Are we together? So I'm saying that agriculture has taught us that every atmosphere does not produce, it's not every atmosphere that produces the kind of miracles that we want. You can carry a seed and drop it on the ground. And after one year, you will be surprised to meet that seed there. Atmospheres speak. There are atmospheres that tell the plant or the, the, the seed, don't grow, and it remains there in obedience to that atmosphere. But the same atmosphere, you can take the same seed to another atmosphere and you watch the miracle of growth and the miracle of resurrection. Is that true? Almost every house has something called a refrigerator. What do you think the assignment of a refrigerator is? It's not just to cool whatever you put there. The refrigerator is a manager of atmospheres. Because whatever it is that you put in there, especially if to preserve, the, it, it is, the refrigerator is built based on a consciousness that all the bacteria and everything, they don't just act on food. They depend on an atmosphere. So the atmosphere either avoids it or slows down drastically the activities. Is that true? Atmosphere. There is an atmosphere that can turn raw food into, you call it cooked food. It's an atmosphere. When you set your food on fire and you close it, you expect something to happen. Why do you close the pot? You create an atmosphere. And something happens under that atmosphere. Most believers do not understand the atmosphere factor as far as the miraculous is concerned. And so there are all kinds of assumptions. People just believe that God is in heaven. He loves us. He should move. And we become disappointed because we do not understand that it takes more than just the desire of God to touch you for you to be touched. There is the atmosphere component. And this is what I want to teach you tonight. There are three major components I wrote here. It's just a charge that creates the atmosphere for miracles. That means everywhere you see the manifestation of the miraculous, 
and the supernatural in the life of an individual especially when you see that it is a realm it is not just an event that happens when it becomes a realm of possibility continually it means that that individual has been able to capture the components to create and to live under that atmosphere and do you know the beautiful thing about the atmosphere of the miraculous is that it does not have to remain in church here you can find the ingredients and with the mastery of a chef, you can transport that atmosphere. Not just to your house, it can live with you. You can create your own climate. My goodness. So that you become a walking, breathing, living manifestation of the supernatural. In 2005, I was on an extensive study on the miraculous and on signs and wonders and the glory of God particularly. And I began to study the life of the Jews because they had such profound manifestations of the glory of God as recorded in scripture, especially the Old Testament. I wanted to study what they were taught that would cause the cloud, that Shekinah of his glory to rest with them. In fact, Moses said it this way. He said, do not let us depart from here if your presence will not go with us. He says, how shall they know that we are a people who are separated, consecrated? And he said, my presence will go with you. And because of that presence, I will give you rest. The discoveries that I made shocked me. Because you see, when you watch the nation of Israel through their journey, they were not people who really had weapons of war because they were on transit. Remember that when they started their journey from Egypt, they never had a chance to stop and camp. It was, they, were, they were sojourners until they got to the promised land. And yet they fought. Yet many things happened. They carried with them a formula and they carried with them a climate. Are we together now? That when the neighboring nations saw them, they were afraid. Not because of the dexterity of their soldiers. They were largely not warriors. But they understood something about an atmosphere that they would carry they would carry the ark you will read in your bible when after they made the ark they would put it at the center and even when um balaam is called to come and curse them he would stand and try to invoke a curse and it would not happen and he said there is a formation something about the ark in the center has created a cloud that no speakings from whatever distance can reach them he said the shout of a king is in the midst of them. Listen, if you can create this atmosphere, in this atmosphere, you will enjoy immunity. In this atmosphere, you will enjoy favor. In this atmosphere, you will enjoy all things supernatural. The supernatural is not limited to healings and deliverances alone. Every manifestation that is beyond the realm of science, beyond the realm of human thoughts. Do you believe what you're hearing? So three components very quickly. Let this be a lesson for us. If you're a man of God here, please listen. If you truly want to see the miracle working power of Jesus flow in and through your life, genuine miracles, then here are the keys. Are you ready? Component number one, if you want to create that atmosphere that makes for the supernatural, that makes for the miraculous, component number one, genuine passion and a heart of total surrender write it down the first non-negotiable component you want to create the atmosphere that is ever conducive for signs and wonders it is the atmosphere of genuine passion and total surrender Matthew chapter 11 from verse 28 and 29. Total surrender. 
Hear what Jesus said. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. He says, and I will give you rest. I will give you rest if you come unto me. Notice, he didn't say follow me yet. He said, come unto me. It takes a lot to come unto him. To come unto him means that you realize you are inadequate. To come unto him means that you realize that by yourself and unassisted, there is not so much you can do. We live in a world that is full of pride. We live in a world where we are not committed to anything at all. But if you must create that atmosphere of the glory and the power of God, it comes with a price. And the first component is genuine passion. Passion towards what? God. Passion towards God and passion towards the things of God. God is not a herbalist. God is not a magician. God does not play games with people. If you come to him, there must be a determination within your heart. The psalmist said, Oh Lord, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My heart longs for you. Give it to us, Psalm 63. It says, To see your power and your glory. Oh God, thou art my God. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsted for you. Say passion. One more time. Say passion. My flesh longed for you in a dry and thirsty land where no water is what for verse 2 to see your power and your glory as i have seen in the sanctuary passion for god and total surrender surrendering your intellect surrendering your logic can i tell you years ago i listened to benny Hinn and he made a statement that I appreciated so much, but now, having worked a bit in the miracle ministry, I can tell you I understand clearer what he was saying. He said this, that in many of his meetings, please look up, listen carefully, that many of his meetings, you would find out that if people, every time people came for his meetings, if their attention was just on their healing, their problem, whatever was wrong with them, most times they would not receive. They would have to take their eyes away from the problem and focus on Jesus. Because for many people you see, they do not agree that God has the absolute power to help them. So they just feel, God, I don't want you to come into every aspect. I've managed this one. I just want you to touch this and that. And God says, you are either ready to get out of the way and allow me step in. Or you finish fighting and exhaust your pride. And we live in a world that is largely philosophical. There is over-dependence on the flesh. So when people come for a miracle service like this, for instance, you are trusting God to reach you and open doors. But from head to toe, you are full of yourself. My certificates, my qualifications, I have all these things. All I need is just a bit of anointing on it and I'm on fire. And God says, no, except the Lord builds a house. They labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord watches over a city, the watchmen watch it but in vain. It is vain to wake up early in the morning, listen carefully, to sleep late in the night, only to eat the bread of sorrow. We have seen skilled people suffer as if God did not call them. And we have seen weak people, weak people. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And he says, lean not on your own understanding. It is the same God who gave you understanding. To lean does not mean to not use it. It means when it has to do with dealing with God, do not bring your understanding to compete with him. His realm is higher than your realm. His thoughts higher than your thoughts. Most times people come to God, but they are not absolutely surrendered. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. You know that song? Have your way, Lord. Have your way. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. Oh, Lord. Have your way. Lord, I am here so that you will lift me. It is not my assignment to tell you how. If I could help myself, I would not need to come to you. 
don't sit down and you are saying lord lift me and your mind has held nmpc you are not going to let that is not how god lifts trust him enough to get out of the way how you would do it oh god i do not know but i know that i am in your presence let the lifter lift me over dependence on our intellect our philosophies will always corrupt that atmosphere for the miraculous can i tell you this many times when i'm praying preparing for any meeting especially the miracle service sometimes god will usually open me to visions of what happened what is going to happen sometimes literally or sometimes i just get pictures of people's cases and the rest but i prepare my sermon you see that i do my due diligence but i never come to stand here with just an over calculation of this i come he's the lord of hosts and when i come having prepared myself i am completely yielded to him to move as he wills in as much as i have a structure but he knows that when it has to do with this meeting he can move as he wills you see because i don't know except it is revealed to me i cannot know what is wrong with you and i cannot know the area of desperation and the area of need and it is pride to stand in the way of the one who knows in fact it's wickedness it's not just pride i'm trying to help you but i'm ignorant there is the one who knows exactly where to touch you and now i will not let him touch you and sometimes you can be the limitation yourself because you can think this is what you need but from the mind of god what you need is totally different it is up to you to say lord i i truly believe that you can visit me surrender there are times you can have pain and you may go to the doctor with with the arrogance of an amateur and almost guessing and you can say doctor i am sure it is this thing and the doctor laughs at you and laughs at your ignorance and tests you and tells you something totally different and says that's what is wrong with you but you are feeling another symptom and yet the doctor from a professional standpoint you think it's a financial problem open up your heart and let god visit you you will find out it has nothing to do with finances in fact sometimes you can think it's an issue of ill health but it is not an issue of ill health. It's the ministry of the devourer. He knows that the only way or the most predictable way to destroy your finances is your health. If he spoils your car, you will leave it there. You will not fix the car. So he spoils your body because he knows you will not leave that body that way. And since he has found out that you like this body and you want to live long in it, he will continue to create affliction so that your finances will suffer. So to you now, you can think the real problem is finances. But when you come to God, he will tell you it is not finances. The real problem is A, B, C. Listen, allow God to interpret your situation to you. The first atmosphere is that atmosphere of total surrender. Lord, I have come before you. As far as I know, there are 10 major problems with me. Disfavor, no helpers, oppression. That's the best that I can know. But I have come to you. You are the wisdom of God. Diagnose me. And do you know sometimes you see, demon spirits walk like an octopus. How many of you know an octopus? That creature with many expressions like legs it can touch your finance same spirit touch your marriage same spirit you think there are different issues but they are caused by one and the same spirit how many of you will like to cut down a tree by removing the leaf one by one how intelligent does that sound and you are trying to say lord can you help me remove all the leaves in this area and god says no i know what the problem is the leaves will grow allow me to come and bulldoze that thing from the root <laughs> and sometimes when he throws it from the root you will still see the leaf looking green and he says go and rest it's dead and he said no it is still green he says i know what i did ah. <laughs> total dependence some of you it may be ministry ministry is not growing 
and based on your interpretation, it is because I'm in an area that is not my, maybe territorial area. Maybe I'm a Yoruba person among houses or a Hausa person among Yorubas. All those things are just flimsy reasons. God is telling you the diagnosis is there is no favor on you. Period. Lord, why is it that when I get a job in two weeks, they drive me? In two weeks, they drive me. And you have come with the name of your boss in your prayer request now. Hoping that by laying hands on him, maybe God will kill him or do something. But even if the man dies, for instance, will you really be free? Because what is really wrong with you is a pattern. It's a demo. These are altars that have nothing to do. Your boss just happens to be the one that was used to oppress you because of something on you. Have you seen people who complain and even if the object of complaint is taken away from them, the situation does not change. It's not about the person causing trouble now. It's about something on you that keeps attracting trouble. Are we learning? Atmosphere. Component number one. So there has to be genuine passion for the Lord and then complete surrender. Why do you surrender to him? You surrender to allow his wisdom go before you. To allow him be the one to truly interpret what you need. When you go to the hospital, imagine that you go to the hospital and you are seated with a consultant and you just say, sir, where do you keep your syringes? Where do you keep this? And he says, what for? He says, I want to inject myself. I know exactly what is wrong with me. I just want you to be a witness. <laughs> and you are breaking that thing and about to give yourself injection. And he said, you are even doing it the wrong way. He said, no problem. I know what I'm doing. And the man says, why are you then here? When you go to a consultant, even if you are a consultant yourself, you are not a consultant in that area. So when you go, you sit down like every other person and say, doctor or consultant, ABC is wrong with me. And you trust him and depend on him. Don't come to God tonight. In fact, some of you in all honesty, in all honesty, as you are seated right now, you cannot truly articulate what is wrong with you. You can only tell the symptoms of what is wrong with you. My money has been hanging for five months. Could it really be a financial issue? Let's find out. My health has been having a problem. Could it really be a health issue? Let's find out. Are you learning what I'm saying now? So if I'm here right now and the Holy Spirit says, everybody stand up and start jumping around and dancing, as stupid as it is, that's exactly what I'm going to do. It does not make sense to me, but you have to understand that I'm not the one doing it. It is the one who knows what is wrong with you. Are we together? I never stand on stage ministering to God's people and then close that door to the wisdom of the Spirit. I am aware of how limited and how very ignorant I am as far as having the full capacity to help God's people is concerned. You have come because you believe in Jesus and you have come because you believe in me and I'm grateful for that trust. But let me tell you, unassisted, I'm only wasting your time. I can only share scripture and say, let's pray. Do you know what it takes to stand from here and begin to make declarations over someone's life and like that doors are opening you are intelligent can a man do that unassisted no but I'm happy to inform you I'm not alone here not alone hmm. and the Lord walking with them and the Lord walking with them and the Lord walking with them Number two, the second component that creates the atmosphere for miracles, for signs and wonders, are you ready? Is deep heartfelt worship. Deep heartfelt worship. Apostle, I'm not a musician, but you want solutions. But you want solutions. Can I tell you, if you are not a worshiper, there are certain dimensions and certain 
levels of the atmosphere of the miraculous that your mind your life will not command you see a worshiper is not just one who sings a worshiper is one whose life words and then singing creates that atmosphere for the presence of God to be made manifest singing is only a tool you can sing and you are a singer and a musician and yet not a worshiper true worship starts from the heart True worship is a response, is a revelation. You know who God is. Heartfelt worship. Second Chronicles chapter 5 from verse 11. Second Chronicles. I enter the holy of holies. Can I tell you this? I've worked with God a bit. Let me teach you how to neutralize negative atmospheres. Introduce an atmosphere of deep, heartfelt, presence-carrying worship. Not senseless songs that don't carry any atmosphere. There are songs that were written by people who were just ambitious. I'm talking of atmospheres that carry fire and the power that can change. When you set that atmosphere, let me tell you what begins to happen. The power of the atmosphere for worship. Because you see, the way God works is that whatever dimension of Him He wants you to experience, He, through the ministry of the Holy Spirit, will put it in your heart to begin to sing that dimension. He becomes what you are saying. Worship and singing is the protocol for experiencing him. He said, come before him with singing. So if he wants to move as a mighty God, the Holy Spirit, do you know, there are times that songs come as weapons, not as music. Are we together? There are certain things called songs of deliverance. You, they are not special numbers. That is the weapon that God has given you for that victory. Have you woken up one morning and you find out it can be the line of a song and you will keep singing it for days? Can I tell you, whenever you have that prompting, don't stop. Keep singing that song. In that song you are singing, it may not make sense to anybody. But there is victory being birthed in it.